Hey there YouTube, Far North Racing here. Today we're going to be talking about this piece of kit right here. This is a benchtop DC current limiting power supply. We're going to talk about why it is we have one, and we're going to talk about the features that it has that make it useful for the projects that we're doing here in the shop. So what we're going to be doing a little later on this month is some electroplating. We've got a bunch of rusty bolts that we stripped all the rust off of, and what we're going to do is we're going to replate them with zinc and then further treat them with zinc chromate to turn them back into something that looks a lot like the cadmium color that the, the bolts come with stock. In order to do that, we need a power supply capable of driving the electrolysis reaction, and so we pick this up here. This kind of power supply is also very useful if you're getting into electricity and electronics projects, because it has a number of features that help you design your projects correctly, and specifically it has a feature that helps you prevent letting all the magic blue smoke out of your project when you're hooking it up for the first time. So this particular one is a ProTech 3005 Bravo, but this means that it is a 0 to 30 volt, 0 to 5 amp power supply. The actual brand isn't particularly important. There's a whole bunch of different companies that make lab quality power supplies like this. And this one I picked up on eBay, where you can find a whole lot of similar kinds of power supplies that used to live in somebody's lab someplace that are now been sold off for cheap. Based on the, the discoloration of what used to be a white faceplate, it's probably as much as 20 years old. But that's okay, because there's not a whole lot of smarts baked into this thing. All it needs to be able to do is hold out a constant voltage or a constant current, and that doesn't require a whole lot of rocket science inside. So these things tend to stay good for life. So the, the functions that are on here are really very simple. Voltage on the one side, amperage on the other. Here you have a knob that allows you to adjust voltage in terms of coarse and fine. Here you've got a knob that allows you to adjust amperage in terms of coarse. Uh, this button here is just an on-off switch for the power leads on the front. This button you hold down if you want to tweak this because you don't want to accidentally bump this knob, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then there's a, an ON OFS switch on the front. That's it. This thing's whole purpose in life is to provide a constant voltage source or current source to power whatever project it is you need to do. So this power supply has the ability to hold a set voltage for you at whatever amperage you want to set it at. And if you turn down the current level, below the 5 amps that it's capable of putting out in maximum, it will clip the current to whatever maximum you set on here. Uh, it does that by reducing the voltage once you hit that point, but the point being is that with this thing turned on, you can set the maximum amount of amperage that will come out of the power supply. That's something you can't do with other power supplies, we'll, we'll go over that in a little bit, but that's the core reason why you need one of these things. And so to understand why that is, we first have to understand a little bit of electrical theory. The first part of it is that voltage is a measure of electrical potential, which you can kind of imagine as being electrical pressure. If you think about it as sort of the same sort of pressure in a hydraulic pump or in a water supply system or anything you can pressurize, you've got the right sort of idea. This is the ability of the power supply or the battery would have you to be able to push electrons down a wire. The other component is resistance. Resistance is a measure of how much electricity can flow through whatever conductor it is you're trying to hook up. Resistance is a measure of how well electricity flows through your circuit. And voltage and resistance have a relationship which is known as Ohm's Law. And that says that voltage is equal to the amperage times the resistance. What we care about is actually an alternate form of it, which is to say that current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And why that's important is that it's the amount of current flowing through a circuit that does damage to things. A small current is a small number of electrons, is a small amount of heat buildup, generally doesn't hurt anything. A large current is a large heat buildup, and that's where you wind up in the potential for letting all the magic blue smoke out. Electrical components are rated at a certain maximum amperage, and if you go over that amperage, they go pop, boom, spits and sparkin, and all kinds of nasty things happen, and all of a sudden, circuit no worky. In electroplating, same sort of idea. Here, though, it's not so much about setting fire to something as it is about controlling the rate of deposition of material onto the parts you're plating. If the current is too low, then the rate of application is too slow and it takes forever. If it's too high, it starts to burn the part, uh, especially around the edges where the electrical potential is a little bit higher. You wind up with singed bits and, and uneven plating instead of a nice even coat of plating. So what you need to be able to do is hold the current constant, and you can't do that with just voltage because the resistance of the part may be changing as it's being plated as material goes on top of it. 
So in order to keep the current constant, you would have to keep the voltage going up and down accordingly to, to tune it. And just by setting the knob on here, you can tell it, hey man, I want it to produce this much current and it will do so. You can use a battery like this one as a voltage source as well. Batteries only put out the rated amount of voltage they're designed to put out up until the point where they don't. So this, for example, is a 12 volt battery. It's supposed to put out 12 volts up until it starts to run out of electrical charge inside the battery. The battery starts running down and then the voltage starts to fall off a cliff. So for example, we can take our trusty multimeter here and hook it up to this battery. And you can see it's putting out 11.37 volts, which tells us this battery is not fully charged. So this particular battery is rated at 770 cold cranking amps and it is a 50 amp hour battery, which means that this battery is supposed to be able to put out 770 amps of max current at any one point in time when it's cold, and it will put out 50 amps for one hour or anything less than 50 over a longer time. So 50 amps for one hour, one amp for 50 hours, or anything in between. To understand how this could be problematic, let's take this screwdriver and we'll just put it here and we'll just measure the resistance of the screwdriver barrel. So let's call that 0.3 ohms, just to be on the safe side. So we run that through Ohm's law. We take 12 volts and we divide that by 0.3 ohms, we get 40 amps. So if we were to take this and connect it across those terminals, we get 40 amps of current running through that screwdriver. And assuming the rating of the battery is correct, 40 amps on a 50 amp hour battery, that will weld itself onto the terminals, no problem at all, and uh, probably melt the screwdriver. So you can see that we wanna have something that will limit the current when we connect something across the power lines. What we've done here is put the voltmeter in voltage mode, and we've got the power supply hooked up to the inputs of the meter here. So what we're gonna do now, amperage is all the way off, voltage is all the way off, if we turn this, nothing happens because we've told it we don't want any current on it. So we just hold this down and we can use this to set what current we want. So there, we're telling it we don't want the current to go any higher than 0.1 amp. And now we can go ahead on this side and turn this up. And you can see there that we're getting the voltage on the power supply. We can go ahead and turn this up, and you can see the voltage tracking as it goes along, all the way to full power, which is 31.4 indicated on here, 30.72 on the other, so uh, reasonable. There's probably a way to calibrate this, I'll have to look in the manual and see how that's done. The bottom line is you can go ahead and change this. So for example, you're doing electronics, uh, you want to do by volts. So there we go. Five volts indicated 4.98. Close enough for government work. On this side, you can then set the amperage you want to match whatever the limits of the components you're working with. So that way you can go ahead and, and turn this up. And it will now cap the amperage at the value it's currently set on there. For the application that I'm gonna be using it for, which is electroplating, you do it the other way around. You, you basically set that to, to whatever you want. So let's say we're gonna do one amp. We'll call that one amp. And then you go ahead and twist the voltage knob up as high as you want. And then, this will clip this at one amp by lowering the voltage on the other side to keep it so that it's even. So that that way, no matter what, the current going through the part is the same because we don't care what the voltage is. So other ways you can go ahead and, and get sources of DC power, uh, you can use batteries that like we saw here. You can use wall warts that you use out of, you know, the sort of general phone chargers or whatever the random sort of DC power adapters you see plugged into the wall. You can use computer power supplies. The problem that those all have though, is they don't have this current limiting factor. 
if you short circuit that or you run it through a circuit that doesn't have the resistance that you think it does and it's a whole lot less, Ohm's law is going to apply. It's going to try and pump all those electrons into there as fast as it can, and it's going to hit the amperage limit either of the part you've got it hooked up to, in which case all the blue smoke comes out of the part, or it'll hit the amperage limit of the power supply itself, in which case usually the protective fuse inside the power supply will pop to prevent the power supply from cooking itself, or maybe it'll even pop the breaker in your wall if you're asking for that much current. So that feature, that current limiting feature, is what makes these things really do the job. So what I've done here is I've hooked up the power supply to that screwdriver from our example earlier. And we've got this thing in current limiting mode, and we've told it that we only want to see 0.2 amps through that. If I then turn on the voltage knob, see how the light comes on? That then tells me that it's now in current limiting mode, and it's limiting the current to, to what we've set it to, or in this case, it's limiting it to where it says 0.16. So these videos are no fun unless something goes boom. So what I've done is I've taken this old circuit board. That's the, that's the brains that came out of the air conditioner that broke down, so that board's no good. So what I did was desolder a resistor, and what we're going to do now is just going to have a look and see what the resistance is of it, and then we'll hook it up to the power supply and see if we can't make some sparks. So a quick test. So that's 33 ohms right there. All right, so with 33 ohms on the resistor, we'll just set this, the current, about there. We'll go ahead and we'll crank the voltage all the way up. So you can see what it's doing right now. The light is on, so it's in current limiting mode, and it's currently limiting the voltage to 4.5. If we increase the voltage or increase the current, and there we go. Look at that. Happily limiting the current until we have ourselves a nice fire. Let's dial that off. So what this shows is with this in current limiting mode, we were able to keep the current down to where that resistor was happy, but as soon as we cranked the current up more than the resistor could take, uh, we got ourselves a nice little fire. Yeah, she's pretty much euchred. There you go. A nice graphic demonstration that shows why this kind of piece of kit is just so darn useful. Thanks for watching. Stop it, please. Don't hit me. Please. Don't hit me. Come on, man. Quit that banging.